Hi, my name is Abby Lynch and I'm the Teen Services Librarian here at the Brookfield Library and I'm back for another week of Teen Book Talks. So this topic this week is pandemic books, some pandemic fiction, some nonfiction. We're coming up on a lot of year anniversaries of things being closed or of the last time I did this or the last time I did that. And while some people very understandably probably want nothing to do with any sort of pandemic fiction or anything like that, I know that there are a lot of people out there who process things and um, engage with their feelings through reading, so I wanted to offer an opportunity for those folks to connect with some books about pandemics. If that isn't you, don't you don't have to watch the video or read any of these books. Feel free to go back and find another video or request a personalized reading list or a super secret book bag um, and tell me that you don't want to read about pandemics and I will give you something else. But for those of you who would like to explore the topic through literature, there's a lot of books out there for you. Um, I have a mix of nonfiction, historical fiction, and then some speculative sci-fi fantasy fiction. So hopefully you'll find something that interests you. First up is Fever Year, The Killer Flu of 1918 by Don Brown, which is nonfiction in comic format. New Year's Day, 1918. America has declared war on Germany and is gathering troops to fight. But there's something coming that is deadlier than any war. When people begin to fall ill, most Americans don't suspect influenza. The flu is known to be dangerous to the very old, young, or frail, but the Spanish flu is exceptionally violent. Soon thousands of people succumb, then tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, and more. Graves can't be dug quickly enough. What made the influenza of 1918 so exceptionally deadly? And what can modern science help us understand about this tragic episode in history? So, um, you see here... The cover is in this sort of muted palette, and that continues inside. It's a lot of these brown, beigey colors. Um, every once in a while, I'll get a pop, mostly of red. Um, so pretty somber illustrations for a pretty somber topic. Um, but Don Brown has a lot of um, nonfiction comics, so if you've maybe read one before, or if you're interested in the topic, um, looking for some nonfiction, this one's for you. And this book is also available on Hoopla. Next up we have some historical fiction that would be good for tweens, the tween audience, which is Fever 1793 by Laurie Hulse Anderson. It's late summer 1793 and the streets of Philadelphia are abuzz with mosquitoes and rumors of fever. Down near the docks many have taken ill and the fatalities are mounting. Now they include Polly, the serving girl at the Cook Coffee House. But 14-year-old Maddie Cook doesn't get a moment to mourn the passing of her childhood playmate. New customers have overrun her family's coffee shop, located far from the mosquito-infested river, and Maddie's concerns of fever are all but overshadowed by dreams of growing her family's small business into a thriving enterprise. But when the fever begins to strike closer to home, Maddie's struggle to build a new life must give way to a new fight, the fight to stay alive. So that's Fever 1793 by Lori Hulse Anderson, and this is also available as an audiobook on Hoopla. Next up, we have another historical fiction, A Death Struck Year by Makia Lucier, and this was a Nutmeg nominee in 2017. For Cleo Berry, the people dying of the Spanish influenza in cities like New York and Philadelphia may as well be in another country. That's how far away they feel from the safety of Portland, Oregon. And then cases start being reported in the Pacific Northwest. Schools, churches, and theaters shut down. The entire city is thrust into survival mode and into a panic. Headstrong and foolish, 17-year-old Cleo is determined to ride out the pandemic in the comfort of her own home rather than in her quarantined boarding school dorms. But when the Red Cross pleads for volunteers, she can't ignore the call. As Cleo struggles to navigate the world around her, she is surprised by how much she finds herself caring about near strangers. Strangers like Edmund, a handsome medical student and war vet. Strangers who could be gone tomorrow. And as the bodies begin to pile up, Cleo can't help but wonder, when will her own luck run out? So that's A Death Struck Year by Makia Lucier, and this is also available in ebook format on Hoopla. Next up is a book that's new to the library. Um, we just got it in February. It's called The Electric Kingdom by David Arnold. And this book and the next couple of books are more in the sci-fi, speculative fiction, fantasy realm of things. If you're looking for something that's not historical, um, or maybe has a little bit more of a removal from 
the, the current situation, these will be maybe ones that you'll want to check out. So The Electric Kingdom by David Arnold. When a deadly fly flu sweeps the globe, it leaves a shell of the world that once was. Among the survivors are 18-year-old Nico and her dog on a voyage devised by Nico's father to find a mythical portal, a young artist named Kit raised in an old abandoned cinema, and the enigmatic Deliverer who lives life after life in an attempt to put the world back together. As swarms of infected flies roam the earth, these few survivors navigate the woods of post-apocalyptic New England, meeting others along the way, each on their own quest to find life and light in a world gone dark. So that's The Electric Kingdom by David Arnold. Next up we have Agnes at the End of the World by Kelly McWilliams. Agnes loves her home of Red Creek, its quiet sunny mornings, its dusty roads, its God. There, she cares tirelessly for her younger siblings and follows the town's strict laws. What she doesn't know is that Red Creek is a cult controlled by a madman who calls himself a prophet. Then Agnes meets Danny, an outsider boy, and begins to question what is and isn't a sin. Her younger brother Ezekiel will die without the insulin she barters for once a month, even though medicine is considered outlawed. Is she a sinner for saving him? Is her sister Beth a sinner for dreaming of the world beyond Red Creek? As the prophet grows more dangerous, Agnes realizes she must escape with Ezekiel and leave everyone else, including Beth, behind. But it isn't safe outside, either. A viral pandemic is burning through the population at a terrifying rate. As Agnes ventures forth, a mysterious connection grows between her and the virus. But in a world where faith, miracles, and cruelty have long been indistinguishable, will Agnes be able to choose between saving her family and saving the world? So that's Agnes at the End of the World by Kelly McWilliams. Our last book today is This Mortal Coil by Emily Suvada. When a lone soldier, Cole, arrives with news of Lachlan Agata's death, all hope seems lost for Katerina. Her father was the world's leading geneticist and humanity's best hope of beating a devastating virus. Then, hidden beneath Cole's gene-hacked enhancements, she finds a message of hope. Lachlan created a vaccine. Only she can find and decrypt it if she can unravel the clues he left for her. The closer she gets, the more she finds herself at risk from Cartaxis, a shadowy organization with a stranglehold on the world's genetic tech. But it's too late to turn back. There are three billion lives at stake, two people who can save them, and one final secret that Cat must unlock. A secret that will change everything. So that's This Mortal Coil by Emily Suvada. So that's it for this week's book talk. Um, you can place a hold on any of those books online at brookfieldlibrary.org, or you can give us a call at 203-775-6241, and we'll help you out with that, and you can pick them up for curbside pickup. Again, if you are not wanting to read about pandemics, that's totally understandable and fine. Um, or if those books weren't interesting to you, you can always reach out to me for a personalized reading list um, or a super secret book bag, just some new ways to find some other books to read. And the information for that is available on the teen tab on brookfieldlibrary.org. Until next time, I hope you have a great week.